when we are doing a subroutine call using the register procedure that we just looked at, uh, we can have up to four arguments, up to two return values, and up to one level of procedure call. If we need anything more than any of those, we're going to have to do something special. One thing we could do is store arguments in a different place besides these registers. Um, we can use S registers for the arguments, and then we can use T registers for return values, but we're going to need S and T registers for our temporary working area whenever our, we're doing anything else inside the subroutine itself. So we're going to need some other place to store information uh, to pass it back and forth between procedures, uh, both to pass to procedures and return from procedures. Uh, we're going to also need some way to store and retrieve the return address in a procedure if we then want to call another procedure. Both of these things can be stored in memory. In fact, they have to be stored in memory because that's the only other place we have to store information. Register file and data memory, that's it. But we're going to need some sort of standard way of doing this. Otherwise, for any procedure that we're going to call, we're going to have to set up all sorts of extra variables and special locations in our uh, data area in our assembly language. What we'd like to do is to be able to allocate this stuff in real time at runtime when we run the program so that if we call a procedure more than once we can just keep adding copies of these things to wherever we're going to uh, store this information. For example, if we were doing any recursion we're going to call the same procedure over and over and over again. That's not going to work with any of these single shot solutions. So we need a general solution uh, that's going to be a common area for additional arguments. Uh, we can also use that area for local variables, and we can use that area to store return addresses to get us back again. And we're going to call this the stack. This is going to be an area in memory that is going to be able to be accessed incrementally and used to store return, ad return values, return addresses, um, arguments, local variables, and a bunch of other stuff. The idea with the stack, again, is that's a special area of memory that's incremental. We're going to keep a uh, pointer to the top of the stack, which is sort of the last thing we've done, and then anytime we want to put information in some sort of temporary storage, we just push it onto the stack. If you've taken your data structures class, it's just push and pop. It's a regular stack as a data structure, except we're going to keep it in memory. So we're going to push onto the stack, and then when we need some information, we're going to pop it off the stack. It is last in, first out data structure with push and pop. But again, everything we do has to use our regular assembly language procedures. So we're going to need to build in some way to push information to the stack and then pop it off again. And the way we're going to do that is by holding a pointer to the last thing we put in, in memory, and we're going to call this the stack pointer. This is going to be just like the program counter. It's a register that contains an address and that address points to the last thing we just put into the stack. So it's going to point to the top of the stack, and it serves as the memory address of the current or push or pop operation. And then we can just use load word and store word for pushing stuff onto the stack and popping stuff off of the stack. But each one of those is now also going to mean that at the same time as loading the word or storing it, uh, we are also going to have to modify the value of the stack pointer so that it continues to be pointing to the top of the stack. So it looks like this. Uh, we're going to use an instruction called load word, <laughs> which we know, uh, from the stack pointer to load the top word from the stack. We're going to store word to push to to, um, to put information onto the top of the stack. But again, at each one of these times, we're also going to need to move the stack pointer. Now we have to decide whether the stack pointer is going to point to the last thing we looked at or the next available slot. One or the other of these. Uh, means that we can either uh, move the stack pointer before we load or move the stack pointer before we store. And the way we do this, again, by convention in MIPS is to move the stack pointer before we store and load and then move the stack pointer after we load, which means that the stack pointer is always pointing to the first full item on the stack. The, the last thing we push onto the stack, the stack pointer is pointing at so to put more information on the stack, first we have to make room by moving the stack pointer, and then we can store that information there. To retrieve information from the stack, we're going to just retrieve the information and then move the stack pointer. So push is add immediate, 
by four and then store and pop is load and then add immediate by four. And if we look at the pseudo instructions that are on our sheet, we can see that push and pop are actually already there. Push register here is add immediate by a negative four and then store and then pop is load and then add immediate by four. The stack grows towards smaller addresses and so we're going to subtract a value from the stack pointer as we move up the stack and we're going to add to the stack pointer as we move down the stack. <clears throat> now it's important to remember that memory is never empty. There's always a value in memory somewhere. Um, so when we pop from the stack, we're popping information that we've stored there, but, when, but we don't erase it. It's not gone, right? That data is still there, um, but when we push onto it, we're going to overwrite it, right? So it's really important to remember that popping doesn't erase data, but the next push is going to overwrite the last pop. And as I said already, MIPS stack grows towards lower addresses. And all of these are conventions. I mean, you can build an assembly language that grows towards higher addresses. You can build a, an assembly language that where the stack points to the most, the, the highest empty location un, instead of the last full location. And in fact, when we learn ARM in 301, you'll see that you can implement a stack in any of those formats. You can implement what we call an empty stack, a full stack, an up stack, a down stack, a push stack, a pop stack, lots of different options. But MIPS says, this is the way we're going to do it. Uh, and so it's worth learning it this way. <clears throat> Incidentally, the stack is also uh, where we come up with some of these standard programming terms. So if you are building a stack upwards um, to the point where you actually run into other memory, maybe you run into reserved memory or program memory or something like that, we call that a stack overflow because you don't, you're, the memory isn't infinite. You can build a stack only so far until you run out of space and we call that a stack overflow. This is what the stack looks like in the memory space for MIPS. Um, the, the full memory space starts at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and goes all the way down to F, 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 F. Um, MIPS is a very interesting setup because it is designed to be implemented incrementally. You can have smaller memory spaces and larger memory spaces so that if you're not implementing the full um, 32 bits or 4 billion uh, bytes of memory for example, for an embedded device or a smaller device that doesn't need all that, uh, you can restrict the memory space so that you don't have to implement the full, um, the full chunk of memory. But in general, what happens is the first few bytes are reserved. There's a, a 1 million words here reserved for operating system and, and um, in, uh, interrupt vectors and a bunch of other stuff that we're not going to look at in 201, but we will look at in 301. Your program code goes here. Uh, and then there's an area for static data. So this is your text area and this is your data area. Dynamic data, which is what we call the heap, which we'll talk about later on. And then uh, that grows down. So anytime you do any allocation uh, operations in a high level language like C++, where you do a malloc, that grows onto the heap, which is starting here and growing down. The stack starts at the bottom and grows up. So typically you put the stack pointer um, usually starting somewhere here and then it'll grow upwards as you uh, incur things like local variables get stored on the stack. Um, parameters, procedure calls, or turn addresses, those all get stored on the stack. And we'll see in uh, subsequent videos exactly how that's done. But in general, that's the idea of a stack and the motivation for it, which is basically having a place to put information when you pass it back and forth between subroutines. <clears throat>